Severe weather rumbles through the Northeast, bringing the threat of tornadoes and high winds, while Hurricane Melissa strengthens yet again out in the Atlantic as she accelerates toward Bermuda. We've had some cool temperatures over parts of the lower 48 as well, but a pattern change may just be on the horizon. We'll take a look at all of this in today's video. I'll have your weather IQ question, and we'll wrap things up with our space weather and geological outlook, and I'll have timestamps up for all of this folks so you can just click around wherever you want to go until your little heart is content and I hope you watch the whole show though we're gonna have a good show today and got a couple of things that uh, will be interesting to look at I'm gonna start here by taking a look at Melissa and you can see this core she's strengthening again and a lot of deep convection still at least on the western side of this core but uh, you can expect the uh, storm overall to kind of maintain strength for the next 12 hours or so and then we'll see the shear and cooler waters of the Atlantic take its toll you can already see that shear kind of coming in in this direction pushing it off to the north east and blowing these cloud tops off it looks kind of like an oval as opposed to a perfect circle that we saw the other day here's the official hurricane center track and by 2 a.m by maybe around midnight 2 a.m where it's passing bermuda to the northwest overnight tonight bringing tropical storm force sustained winds in here to bermuda you have a hurricane warning issued for the entire area here uh, in Bermuda and of course you guys can deal with hurricanes and this will be sort of a category two category one borderline hurricane as it comes through and uh, you'll expect to see some tropical storm force winds sustained that would be 39 miles per hour to 74 miles per hour and uh, probably some gusts into the 80s maybe even 90s so that's why you have a hurricane warning up here and then eventually as we get into 2 a.m saturday looking at passing just east of the avalon peninsula up here in nova scotia so st john's points to the east look for tropical storm force wind gusts as we get uh, on out into the overnight hours unfortunately it'll be passing through overnight so uh, that's always the most precarious time because people are asleep, but uh, have your alerts handy just in case you need to be aware of something, but definitely be aware that it's going to be a windy night. And that'll pass on through and out into the North Atlantic. And here is the tropical storm force wind gust cone. And you can see that Bermuda is squarely in the highest probabilities here. And those diminish a bit toward the tip of the Avalon Peninsula here. But still, very, very high chance that at least portions of this tip will see tropical storm force sustained winds with higher gusts likely. If we take a look here at Zoom Earth and put this on into motion, you can see here it comes looking at uh, 105 miles per hour by the time we get on in toward 2 p.m. It could strengthen a little bit more, maybe get to about 110 miles per hour. There it comes with the heavy rain, and it looks like a lot of the rain, if you believe the GFS, will miss Bermuda. The heaviest rain should be along, and uh, probably to the west of the track, Bermuda, you'll see a little bit, and there it goes. Let's follow it on up here. We'll scroll this on back, and here it comes to the Avalon Peninsula. We'll stop it right here. And some heavy rain will be moving in toward uh, St. Pierre and St. John's as we get on in toward the uh, overnight hours, uh, Friday night into Saturday. And here it comes, bringing some heavy rain and some wind to the eastern tip of the island. And then there it goes. And uh, look, look at this, coming in at 2 a.m. as a 75 mile per hour hurricane. So obviously it's going to weaken as it gets into the cooler waters of the North Atlantic, bringing you all some a brief period of rain and wind it will be out of your hair by the time you wake up on sunday morning which is good folks and that is the tropical update nothing else to speak of out here a couple of disturbances on some of the models that we might need to take a look at as we get on deeper into the season but we're starting to get to the point where it's very difficult for big tropical systems to sort of maintain for a very long time with all of these fronts and troughs working off the u.s and uh providing escape routes and uh, keeping things from developing too much. A lot of wind shear starting to take hold out here in the Atlantic, folks. And that's your tropical update. We're going to take a look at the severe weather threat and what else is expected as we get into the Halloween time period. That will be tomorrow and the weekend forecast. But first, I've got your weather IQ question coming right up. Friends, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing that. Hit the subscribe button down below, give the content a like, and turn those notifications on. All of that activity helps us grow the channel, and I can't do it without you. Hopefully, you two will push it out, but the only way it'll do that is if we interact with it and share it with friends and family. If you know people that like the weather, we cover it every day, have a little bit of fun here, do some educating, and you may not like forecast, but you'll have a good time and learn a few things along the way. That's my promise to you, and certainly leave a prayer request if there's anything I can pray about or if you have any questions or comments 
but generally just put them down there. Read and respond to all of those every day. Appreciate all of your support. Told you about this yesterday. Uh, gave you a hint that this was coming, so hopefully you studied up. But today's IQ question is the opposite of yesterday's. Yesterday we talked about what process warms the atmosphere. Today we're going to talk about what process cools the atmosphere, and that's the question. Which of the following processes cools the atmosphere? Evaporation, freezing, transportation, or condensation? And if you watch yesterday's show, you can scratch one of those answers right off and leave yourself a 33.3333% chance of getting the answer correct. And if you know it, Put it in the comment section. If you don't, just wait till the end of the show and I will tell you what it is. Right now, we're going to look at the severe weather threat in the Northeast and the rest of your Halloween and weekend forecast coming right up. Just like yesterday, we've got a little bit of a severe weather threat up here in the mid-Atlantic approaching the Northeast. A chance of an isolated severe thunderstorm or two in here uh, in the Delmarva region particularly and back in the eastern North Carolina. Could see a tornado, 2% chance that. Wind damage as well and the hail is not a threat today. But uh, essentially, you've got a big low pressure center sitting right here and another one sitting here off the coast. These kind of will merge together and draw in some warm, warm Warm, moist air off of the Atlantic Ocean. We've got strong winds aloft and that will provide wind shear. Don't have a ton of instability but enough to provide thunderstorm activity and you can see here on the simulated radar as we go out little few thunderstorm cells this morning looking at really between this morning, early afternoon here in uh, New Jersey into the Delmarva area and uh, back in toward uh, Philly and places like that where we could see a line of thunderstorms work through with some heavy, heavy rain. And a few of those could rotate and put down a quick tornado or two, particularly along eastern areas here. Certainly wind is a possibility with any of these when you have high winds working in a loft. Some of those can uh, provide plenty of shear and create vigorous updrafts and create vigorous outflow, which could bring winds down to the ground and give you some wind damage. And that's what we're looking at potentially this morning, but on an isolated basis, not a widespread deal as we get on in toward this afternoon around five o'clock. Still plenty of rain here in eastern Pennsylvania and to northern New Jersey over into parts of um, Rhode Island and Massachusetts, Massachusetts, working through New York State as well and up into New Hampshire and Vermont and still showery activity back here. But you can see kind of where the low is back in here where the dry slot is and uh, some deformed bands going back through Canada. So look for rain to continue through the afternoon and into the evening and overnight hours tonight as we get on in toward tomorrow morning. Start the day with some rain up here in northern New England. That will kind of be moving through as the low pivots through. More showers back on the backside of that through the afternoon. Tomorrow will keep us cloudy and cool and drizzly up here in the northeast in time for trick-or-treaters to be rolling around the street. So it's not going to be a great evening here south of this back in toward uh, southern Pennsylvania and on back into the southeast and I'll put this on a uh, national view here and we'll actually be able to take a look at this kind of on a broader basis here but look at that there's the United States view tomorrow afternoon got another little cold core system working through the Midwest and that will bring some snow showers mixed with the rain where it gets a little bit cooler back in North and South Dakota. And even some patches of sleet wouldn't be out of the question here and some snow potentially up here in some of the higher elevations in upstate New York and back into the White and the Green Mountains wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of snow on the backside of that low as it kind of works through as we get on in towards Saturday morning. And then another system diving through the plains. We took a look at this yesterday and another system working into the Northeast as we get on into Saturday. Day, but everybody else looking good for Halloween. Now, how much rain are we expecting up here in New England as we go on through this afternoon and get into tonight? Look at that. Already one to two inches of rain. The oranges are one. You get into this red color, you're looking at about two inches of rain. Blues are about five uh, tenths of an inch, so half an inch there. And this will just accumulate as we go on through Friday and then get into Saturday morning and then most of the rain will be done just some light drizzle and leftover spotty showers but uh, widespread one to maybe two even three inches of rain and you guys need rain up here so this is good news hopefully we don't have too much severe weather to contend with we'll have some wind though to contend with particularly in the higher elevations because see some gusts in the 50s but uh, definitely 20s and 30s 
over a large portion of real estate up here in the Northeast. Hold on to those hats. Not quite so bad down in Texas today, but that system working into the Northern Plains is going to bring some windy conditions out here. Look for wind in the 20s and 30s as we take a look at temperatures over the next couple of days. Chilly in the Northeast today. Highs in the 40s, 50s across the Ohio Valley back into the Midwest, but we see a resurgence of 70s back into the panhandle of Nebraska, back down through Texas, 90s in the uh, desert southwest and 80s in Florida and cool up in the Pacific Northwest today. Uh, that That is actually, I'm telling you, I'm giving you the temperature for Sunday. I don't know why it is out here on Sunday, but let's go back to Thursday and start that process over again. 40s and 50s for much of the nation. I thought that looked a little warm in the plains and then uh, warmer as you get on down here toward the Southern Plains, 90s in the desert Southwest, at least that's consistent. Everything else is in the 60s today. Tomorrow, much the same story, but cooler punch with that cold core coming in out of Canada upper level low pressure system bringing in some cooler weather at the surface as well as northerly winds uh, 40s up there still 60s along the Gulf Coast states and uh, that cool weather pushes into the east of the Great Lakes in the northeast as we get on into Saturday and then we get on into Sunday there's that return flow ahead of another system coming in and warm air being pushed up into the plains taking a look at lows over the next couple of days there are your cool temperatures this morning as we uh, go out the door it's freezing and below here in the central plains back into the northwest and even into the northeast too 40s for much of the rest of the nation save Florida and California and tomorrow cool again more cool air still here in the rocky mountains and just east into the basically midwest and that will press east as we get on into sunday and or saturday morning and be reinforced there with freezing temperatures or below extending all the way down through the southern appalachians up up into the mountains and the higher elevations we'll see temperatures below freezing everybody else in the 30s and 40s and then the cool air moderates as it heads on into the east on Sunday with less real estate below freezing. Taking a look out toward the uh, longer range, I'm going to go ahead and I've already showed you the precipitation in the northeast, so we'll just skip that view there. But taking a look here in the longer range, there is the storm system today. We're going to run this out. Look what I told you was going to happen the other day. We've got a storm system diving in here into the Great Lakes as we get through the weekend, bringing those showers and snow showers up in your area, up in the plains. Look what happens. Yesterday we had this system. Several models were showing this system sort of consolidate here in the southeast, producing a storm. Well, most of the guidance today keeps this progressive. We don't have any blocking up in the northeast to slow the storm track down, so you get these waves of energy instead of this diving straight down and merging with the southern piece. It keeps a little bit more progressive and positive tilted in that terms of that trough that's tilted from the southwest to the northeast keeps it positive that's positive tilt and it keeps flowing to the east instead of cutting off and you do get a little bit of a cutoff but it sort of dives south here this is the euro some of the other models continue to show a solution like this the ai still wants to develop a storm but now it's on an island where yesterday it was sort of in a group with everybody else so we're seeing maybe a trend toward keeping this thing suppressed and progressive and delivering rain to the far southeast and not so much out into uh, the um, mid-south and upper southeast as well so it could be a dry monday and tuesday as opposed to a wet monday and tuesday we'll keep an eye on it we get on out here toward wednesday and thursday another reinforcing shot of cool air into the northeast but look what happens get a big trough response or tr a ridge response here out in the uh, west and it eventually moves into the mississippi valley bringing a warm-up so we're going to see warm temperatures as we get on out here toward the uh, latter part of next week that'll progress east and look at our hazards map three to seven day hazards map here look at that blank hey not many other weather channels will show you a blank weather map but i will here at cold rains weather Road. you never know what you're going to see this is a blank map that means we don't have any big hazards to worry about over the next several days which is great news six to ten day temperature outlook going to be above normal with ridging out west and near normal here in the east with the only below area up here potentially in the northeast that is november the 4th through the 8th and i told you yesterday on the show you can go back and look at that it's going to get progressively warmer as we get into the middle part of november the way it looks now uh, dry out under that ridge and maybe a little bit wetter than normal here in the southeast and certainly above as energy continues to flow in we've got a kind of a jet stream that's poking into the um, northwest up here and bringing energy in above in Hawaii, Alaska and kind of near normal here in Hawaii and that that's pretty much about it for the uh, long range outlook as far as the 
we'll call it the medium range outlook. We took kind of a look at a longer range period for the winter, the early part of the winter yesterday. So go back and watch that in yesterday's video. Now we're going to take a look at space weather and geological weather, and that's going to be a quick update, I'll just tell you right now. Well, we've been in minor geomagnetic storm conditions as expected because of a coronal hole that is now turning away and enhances the solar wind. As you know, if you watch this channel, we talk about that a lot. Nothing going on on the coronagraph. There's that one lone bar, so we're not really expecting much in terms of interference with electronics or communications or even big aurora production. You can see there's not just a lot uh, uh, chance of that over in our part of the world. And uh, no solar flares either, really, unless a filament blows off or something like that. We're not seeing any big sunspots, certainly none that are complex, and certainly there's just only one coming in, so several are departing and not much going on with the sun right now. Not much going on under the earth either, just a couple of small shakes out here in California down toward the Baja, but uh, nothing going on uh, geologically speaking. So quick update, like I promised, but uh, that gets us into the answer to today's IQ question question pretty quickly and here is the question which of the following processes cools the atmosphere evaporation freezing transportation or condensation and of course condensation warms it as we learned yesterday but uh, what cools it well evaporation that's right folks evaporation is a cooling process just like when you get out of the shower you start to cool down and it starts to feel a little bit cool well that's that's evaporation that's water evaporating off your skin helps you helps you cool, keep cool in the summertime on those hot days when you're out there sweating and it also matters in winter time when you have uh, rain falling into a dry air mass that air mass will cool down and we see that a lot of times east of the apps when we get into these wedging scenarios you get above freezing temperatures at the surface it starts to rain you think hey we're all good well the rain evaporates into that dry air mass cools you below freezing before you know it you got freezing rain that's what happens that's evaporation and that cools the atmosphere and now you know and uh, hopefully uh, that will become useful as we get into the uh, winter months and that's the show for today folks I hope you have a wonderful day we've got one more day to go until Halloween and remember we've got a super moon coming up here on November the 5th that is the beaver moon so that's it today take care folks have a wonderful day and God bless I'll be back tomorrow with another episode take care